Welcome back to the channel. Today it's absolutely freezing on the farm. It is icy cold, it's about zero Celsius. And we're gonna take some of the store cattle out onto the turnips. I've got to wash the man or two off later today. We'll be carting some muck with the 6930 and we're gonna move the 6R out of the shed over to the boiler room at some point and try and grease the teleporter up as well at some point. That has also got to be looked after because we're not looking after the telehandler enough. Just letting the stores out on the turnips. Hopefully they'll go out in a minute. Come on, Nell. Come on. Hoping today to take some muck out and then put the guards on the tractor for the hedge cutter. Go on, up you go. That'll do, girl. All right, well, I'm in the 6.9 now. Put the trailer on the back, as you can see. Dad's loading up the, uh, the trailer. We're just mucking out some yards from the back before muck spreading. Good opportunity to empty the sheds. And then uh, hopefully before long, get the guards on later on today, I'm hoping, for the hedge cutter. So uh, with the frozen ground though, it's pretty good because we're not making any mess on the fields. Which... All right, so I carted out the muck and now I've got the 6.9 and the uh, trailer I've taken off. And we've got this delivery here, which has come today, which is the guard, which I'm gonna put on for the hedge cutter for the side of the tractor. And the bottle of water down below is to attach the guards on. So I'm hoping that this will all go well. This is to stop the glass smashing when we use the hedge cutter on the tractor. Mm -hmm. put the first guard on so as you can see tractor guard and I can still open the door which is of course quite important the visibility from the inside we'll just find out about because that is also equally as important the idea is it's to protect myself and the tractor so I've got another panel which will go on there I'll just shut the window a minute visibility is not too bad of course the suckers are a little bit of a visibility impairment, but I mean, at the end of the day, the guards have got to stay on the window somehow. So it's actually not bad, not too bad. I don't know if you guys have met Nell before, but she's our, our best sheepdog slash cattle dog. She is really, really good. Uh, but she is a little bit excited all the time, aren't you, Nell? Come on. But yeah, she's great. She's really good with the cows. She'll just run around them, bring them in, move them wherever you want to move them. She's marvellous. And then she arrives in the back of the ranger in the summer when we go and check all the cows. She's just brilliant. You're lovely, aren't you? Now I've put the 6.9 away and these guards look really good. I'm really happy with how they turned out. They look semi-professional, I suppose you could say, for hedge cutting. There's a small gap here, but I think if I move the suction over a little bit, I'll close that gap up. And then it's only a pillar in the middle so it's all pretty well protected uv treated as well for the sun so hopefully they won't fade over time and also i'll keep them clean and um, because i can just take the suckers off wash them off with a bit of water every now and then or some soap so really pleased with that super quick to put on and off not a paid promotion just saw them online and i thought that'll do to protect the windows so and um, if you are interested i'll leave a link in the description i think there's a ticket on them oh there you go tractor guard made by um a farmer uh, family farm bill rushton there you go look made by this farmer yeah good idea so I, I can't remember how much they were off the top of my head um but when you think about the price of how much a new piece of glass would cost from john deere they were a lot less than a new window put it that way so and you can see as well i've got to order a service kit for this one it's only five hours away from a service i've got to get the engine oil filters fuel filters loads of things that beacon over there as you can see has stopped working these are hella, be hella beacons this one seems to still be working but i priced them up online the cheapest ones i could find were about 40 pound each so i think to buy the pair is about 80 pounds which is quite expensive i'm going to keep this one going and I'll, I'll order two beacons and put the other one in storage until this one goes bang but the problem is you know this tractor's a 11 plate nine four you know 13 year old say it's uh done well with these beacons if they're the original ones but yeah that one i'm pretty sure the motor's burnt out because i changed the rubber band inside them and didn't make any difference so although the lights aren't it doesn't work 
I might buy some LED ones like the 6R. Some people have been asking about that. We'll go and see that tractor now. That also needs a service. I did change one of the cab filters in it a while ago and one of the hydraulic filters, but I've still got to do a full service on that. So another bill, another bill for the farm. Other than that though, when we cleaned this up for the tractor run, it's really paid off because I've managed to keep it in quite good nick. All things considered, have taken off the Christmas lights for it and all the Christmas stuff. I've even taken my reindeer off. But this is all ready for the hedge cutter now. Needs a service. So. Right, and I want to wash the manor two off this afternoon because it is absolutely filthy from all the yard work it's been doing, carting muck, feeding all the cattle every day. So I've got something to give it a good clean. This is not my usual snow foam. This is uh, a TFR, which I've used in the snow foam lance. It's a bit more like a, a stronger detergent, which I use mainly for when the Taliander has been sitting in muck all winter, which is, it has been. So I'll just put, put it on. It's, uh, it's a TFR traffic film remover. And what we'll do is we'll let it just soak in and do its job, the TFR, and it will just gradually take all the muck and all the grub off, which it's been accumulating over winter. Got the lance there, just changed to the jet washer from the snow foam lance, and then I'll just jet wash it and we'll try and clean it up, bring it back to life. I've got the grease gun, the Milwaukee one. We'll give it a good greasing afterwards as well for the boom, for the axles, for everything on it, all the steering rams and all the little parts you don't think about every day when you're using this machine. It just always gets neglected. It's the most used machine on the farm, but when you think about the jobs it does every day, feeding the cattle, moving muck, moving bales, silage, it's really, really efficient and we couldn't do without it. It's like an extension of my arm, if that makes sense. Really good handy bit of kit, the telehandler, and I'm sure lots of farmers out there feel the same way about a telehandler or a front loader, just invaluable tool. Washed off the mat in the cab, put that back in, and uh, it's nearly, nearly there. It looks a lot better than it did. I've got to wash the other side off. I mean, this has been really mucky for a long time, so it will take a fair bit of time to get it to come right. Start greasing it up, do the boom, the axles, the steering rods, and it will come right. But uh, still a few stuck on places there where it's just been stuck all winter. But anyway, I thought I'd show you now the John Deere 6R because a lot of you have been asking about it that's also going to have a service as well it's uh I think it's on coming up nearly 3,000 hours and there is a service for that so I've got to buy a kit uh Manitou kit and then it will go in the granary and then we'll put the filters on again same with the 6930 that needs a filter kit and there's also a small lawnmower in there the John Deere 750X which also needs a filter kit for this winter. So I've got three machines to service there. And then this is the workshop in here, which we've just changed because I started taking some of the stuff out of here, um, which I, this was my original workshop. And uh, I've got my John Deere oil drum, that's high guard. It's really good for the transmissions of the tractors. I mean, the price now to service the equipment is just through the roof, as I'm sure a lot of you know. So I try and do it all, uh, all ourselves. This is my old workbench. I've got the grease gun out for the manor too. That'll be greased up this afternoon. I've got some tools and stuff in here. Although most of the tools are gonna to be moved over to the next bay over there at the granary um, where the Land Rover is and the baler and the 135 and everything. And then in here, I cleaned this out the other day, swept it all out. Got the bucket in here. The boiler's been loaded, which is for the wood chip system. And then here's the 6R, which has been in here for a little while, came in from straw stacking the other day, washed it off, and it's actually at the moment got the front loader on with the bale spike, and then at the back, um, or in the cab rather, it's uh, not looking too bad condition. But this does need an engine oil filter and a couple of fuel filters as well. So that's, oh my, uh, Manitou, John Deere 6930, 
750X lawnmower, 6155R, and then the Defender as well needs a service as well. So I've got five machines to buy the service kits for, so I'm not looking forward to that. But um, this will have to go in the workshop as well. So one after the other, they'll all go in. Um, I know you guys have been asking about this tractor. It's uh, mainly been cut in straw, but once the 6930 goes in the hedge cutter, which has been changed, um, we're getting a different hedge cutter now, which is a Shelbourne. So you'll see that at the farm show llama so hopefully you can see me in here yeah you'll see that at llama if you go onto the shelbourne stand i believe it's a 7062t um yeah shelbourne have just done an amazing deal and it's a really heavy gt machine mcconnell's now gone and the shelbourne won't be going on this tractor it'll be going on the one next door the 6930 and this at the moment because it's on the front loader is so good for bringing in the straw it's also got plenty of power to cart the muck about and we might put it as well on the muck spreader rather than putting the 6930 on the muck spreader because this has got 195 horsepower on boost so it's got a little bit more power than the 69 for the muck spreader whilst the 69 is on the shelbourne reynolds hedge cutter so that's what's happening that's what's going on and if you go to the stand on the first day or the second day, Shelbourne, that hedge cutter there, you'll see it's got the telescopic boom. That will be going on that 6.9 over there. So drop by Shelbourne Reynolds, say hello to everyone on there. And I might drop on the stand around about half past 10, coffee time, about 11 o'clock. I'll be on Shelbourne stand if you want to see me at the, with the hedge cutter as well. And then later I'll be going to Manitou, Polaris, Crone, and then I think there's a tool company as well, Cramp will go and see as well for spare parts for the tractors because the filters in these are becoming just so expensive. I believe just a single engine filter for these now is somewhere in the region of £80 per filter. And if you think one, t one I think it's got one engine filter and two fuel filters, that's about, you know, two, three hundred quid just for some of the filters. Then you've got the cab filters, which are sort of 60, 70 quid you know, usually they, they sell you the pair. You know, you're talking probably five, six hundred pounds just in filters for some of these tractors now. I mean, this, the 6930, I'll easily spend 1,500 pounds just on buying some parts for them and with oils as well. But, you know, everything's going up at the moment. What else do you do? You know, you can't not service the tractors. They've got to be repaired and maintained. You see, it's just come up on here, look. Service, it knows. These tractors are telling me when they need servicing, I and mean, it's just crazy. My old tractor, my 6300, would never be as clever as this. You know, all these tech, all this technology. I mean, the younger generation, you know, Gen Z. I'm actually a millennial, but Gen Z would know how all this sort of thing works. I'm quite good with Bluetooth, and I can just about get the GPS on if you go onto Auto Track Guidance. But like Clarkson said, most of the time, these guidance systems do get stolen. This one hasn't got its dome on it. It lives in the... In, in a top secret location. I'm not going to say where that lives, but it leaves, lives in a secret location. And I normally use it when I'm cultivating. And if I did invest in a secondhand drill, I'd use it for drilling because that would be good for drilling, to be honest. Um, but yeah, other than that, this is a really good tractor and it is one of my favourite tractors. Hasn't got anywhere near the character of the 6930, but I just like it because it's comfortable, it's quiet, it's a nice, ben nice place to spend the day. The cab's much bigger than the 6930. And if you bring a passenger... The passenger seat is better than the one on the 6930, although this one's not a suspended seat, and the 6930 is actually a suspended passenger seat. But um, yeah, this one's doing well, so we've been moving straw with it, and then it'll go on the muck trailer once the 69's on the hedge cutter, and the muck spreader as well will go on this tractor, I believe, if we drop the front loader off. And it has quite a nice home in here at the moment, so it's uh, living a life of luxury. All right, well, I'm back in the office now and we're ordering some parts for the Manitou. This is the service kit, which we have to order for the Taliandler to get it serviced so that, that it can be ready for all the jobs it's going to be doing this year, feeding the rest of the cattle until spring. Then I would say it's doing the muck spreading, but, but we're getting the MLA on demo. So that'll be doing the muck spreading instead. Then it will be loading the grain later on in the year and then it will be doing silage as well. Then we've got the 6930, got to order this service kit for that tractor. Then we've got the... 6155R, I'm ordering a service kit for that one as well. Uh, and then also, I just wanted to brush over the 6R150 we had on demo. I had the quote through for this the other day. And um, when I had this on demo, I absolutely I absolutely adored it. It was really good. Um, but having had a good few months to think about it, to mull it over over winter, I've reached a small conclusion on it. 
as much as I like this tractor, it was really handy. Pocket-sized tractor, about 177 horsepower on boost. It was only small, it was only four cylinders. My biggest gripe with it is that it drank its fuel tank very, very quickly. Because they've juiced up a small four-cylinder tractor, John Deere, and they've beefed all of its components up to take the power, it has not got the fuel tank capacity. And when I was mowing down at the marshes at seven in the morning, I stopped for my lunch, about an hour after my lunch, I nearly ran out of fuel and had to go back to the farm. And that was this tractor's Achilles heel, as much as I liked it. Then the second Achilles heel was the price tag, £130,000, which I'm sorry, is just too expensive, too pricey for a small load of tractor for a farmer. I did really like it and I will keep an eye out for them, maybe when they come down in price. Um, but for what I want, I do think that the better value would something like a 6430 or a 6125R or a 6130R, just because they're about the perfect amount of horsepower, 130 horsepower on boost is all you want for four cylinders. If you go over that, you just start drinking more fuel. They start becoming a tractor, which they're not, if that makes sense. You know, the 6R150 is not a 200 horsepower tractor. Four, little four cylinder tractors should stay four cylinder utility tractors for little jobs. And yeah, that's what I've thought about. So I think a really good value tractor is actually the one in that shed, the 6155R, because it's six, cylinder, it's six cylinders, it's got plenty of power, it's not too much horsepower, it's just about right, it's very fuel efficient for what it does, it can pull an 18 tonne trailer all day, and it's actually really good value for money. Um, so the 6R150, which we're just looking at, nice, but I doubt that many farmers are going to get into these i think a lot of livestock farmers mixed family farms will get into the smaller 6r130 that would be the one to buy or a 6r120 not the 6r150 as much as i liked it having had time to mull it over so i just thought i'd share that with you and then also i was looking at one of these someone sent me one of these the other day 7530s these are great up to 205 horsepower on boost actually similar horsepower to the 6r15 6155r and I always thought if we ever had any problems with the AdBlue on the 6R, I would always swap it for a 7530, but they're so hard to find in good condition now. And then I'm just looking at one of these kits at the moment for the front linkage on the 6930 so that I can put the front box on with the hedge cutter on the back with the lights on the box, if that makes sense. So I've got to put this seven pin plug on the front linkage, wire it in, and then we can use the plug, if that makes sense. So that's what we're up to, that's what we're doing, trying to get these parts, get everything organized for later on this year when we'll be hedge cutting. We're only, I believe, about five days now as, as well away from Llama, which I'm really looking forward to. Go to the Shelbourne stand, have a look at the hedge cutter, go to the Polaris stand, go and have a look at the Polaris's on there. You, you might see our one on there. And there's also the Manitou stand as well. Hopefully you'll see the MLA pivot steer telehandler, which has got 3.3 tonne lift, five tonne lift when the boom is straight. Um, so go and have a look at that. And there's also the big crane stand as well. And a special guest I'm hoping to get on the channel, Wesley Pandley, one lonely farmer with Kurt Lord Mark, which we're really looking forward to as well. So I'm gonna order these parts, get the tally handler washed off, sort, of that, sort all that out, get the equipment serviced. And thanks for watching, have a good weekend, and I'll catch you on the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel. And click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.